I've always said, as a, a guest of it, for me, I say I've always said 20 to 25 percent of us are physical educators. I don't know what the other 75 to 80 percent of us are. I think they might be game producers. They might be um, activity producers. But I really wonder if they're physically educating the children and youth that they serve. This is the Phys Ed Cast. guest today is someone who could be considered the godfather of physical education, Artie Kamia. Born and raised in Los Angeles, California, he was over, overweight as an elementary school child and often subjected to the many negative aspects of traditional physical education, being slight for basketball teams, not doing well in relays, etc. However, he was fortunate enough to be encouraged through a strong junior high physical education program and slowly became interested in the sport of gymnastics. He competed in high school, collegiate level gymnastics at Los Angeles City College and Cal State and also at the 1972 National NCAA Gymnastics Championships on the ring. He received a Master of Arts in Teaching degree from the University of North Carolina and worked as an elementary physical education teacher for Wake County Public Schools in Raleigh, North Carolina. While in this position, he was able to become involved in curriculum writing, presenting, and other leadership activities. In 1983, he was hired by the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction as a physical education consultant. In 1986, he was promoted to the Section Chief for Arts and Healthful Living. In this position, he directed a group of 11 professionals representing arts, music, dance, visual arts, theatre arts, and healthful living, health, physical education, athletics, and private education. From 2001 to 2005, he was the Senior Administrator for K-12 Healthful Living Education for Wake County Schools. He was recognised in 2004 as the National Physical Education Administrator of the Year and has been called one of the nation's leading experts for K-12 health and physical education in the United States. He's the president and founder of the Great Activities Publishing Company. We'll talk a little bit about that later. And their company is known for their innovative K-12 publication services and workshops, including the National PE and School Sport Institute in Asheville, North Carolina. His work has appeared on numerous ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox TV affiliates, as well as on national public radio and in USA Today. Artie retired from public service in 2005, but continued to follow his passion as a health and physical education advocate through his work with Great Activities Publishing Company. He was recognised by the National Association for Sport and Physical Education as a 2007 Joy of Effort Award winner. Artie and his family live in Durham, North Carolina. I first met Artie when he invited me to be a keynote speaker at the National PE and School Sport Institute in Nashville, North Carolina. Artie is wise, warm, generous and always puts others before himself. So sit back, relax and enjoy a conversation with Artie Kamia. Okay, so I'm here with Artie Kamia. Thank you so much for joining me today, Artie. It's been a little while since we've chatted, but I'm, I'm glad to connect with you again. Um, for those people that don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I am an old guy. <laughs> I'm, an old, I'm an old physical education teacher. I'm 67 years old, been in the profession for around 40 years, uh, pleasantly in the profession for about 40 years. Uh, former elementary physical education teacher, a central school administrator for Wake County Public Schools here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And then I also worked as a physical education consultant for the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. And then I retired, and then I decided there's still too much work to be done, right? Because yeah. there's... And so uh, we started this new national physical education conference called the National PE and School Sport Institute that we have each summer up in uh, wonderful Asheville, North Carolina on the campus of UNC Asheville. And so that's what we're doing. Um, yeah. Just try to really think ahead into the future and 
provide a platform for millennials and people that are interested in doing things different? It's an interesting question because I was gonna I didn't want to get to your age right off the start, but you <laughs> you went you went there straight away. Um, I'm an old guy. Yeah. And happy to be old. No, yeah. exactly. Like I don't like I mean, I, I have the pleasure of knowing you and, and, and having met you and, and spoken with you a bit. And um, I think, like, I have to say, like, I've never seen someone who's your age that has so much energy and so much passion. And, and like you said, you retired and then you decided, well, hang on a second, like, I'm not done. I'm going to come back and, and work even harder than I worked before um, to right. start something new. Like, how does, how does someone who is, you know, decides to retire and then, like, like what made you want to, want to come back and, and start this conference and continue to do all the amazing work that you do? Yeah, well, it's because of a friend. Um, I was uh, consulting up in New York State, and at the end of that visit, I uh, was flying back with a, a fellow consultant who was also on that visit. His name is Jim Rich, and we were talking, and Jim said, you know, they still don't get it. I mean, after all this time, they still don't get the fact that they need to align the, the written, taught, and tested curriculum. And we should do something about it. And I'm thinking, we? Who's, who's the we? I said, well, you and me, we could start a conference. And so we did. We found the venue, UNC Asheville, and invited all of our friends. We really did. We invited George Graham. Um we invited Stevie Chepko. We invited um, uh, Bob Pangrazy, individuals all across the United States to come and spend a week. At that time, it was a week-long conference. Keynotes in the morning, keynotes in the afternoon, breakouts uh, throughout the day between the, 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 the keynotes. And they all said yes, and they all came, and we had a wonderful time. It's, it's we're, You were hobnobbing with... Well, I was going to say rich and famous, but not <laughs> rich. And some of us are semi-famous, I guess. Um, but it was just wonderful. You imagine just like you're you're walking down the hallway and you bump into George Graham, or you're you're in you're in the cafeteria and and right at the table right next to you is Bob Pangrazy. I mean, it was just phenomenal. And so it worked out. So we decided to do it again. And that's what that's how it happened, Nathan. Yeah, organically. Yeah, for sure. And like, um, you know, I was I was lucky to to be able to be invited by yourself to come down there a few years ago as, as one of the keynotes. And it's like you said, like I remember sitting there at, at this table, and you know, like I'd connected with all these people online, and now all of a sudden we're all in the cafeteria having lunch together, and then we're right. at the the social together, and it's. It, it, I've got to say, it does help that I think Asheville, I think I read somewhere once, Asheville has the most uh, craft breweries per square kilometer of anywhere in North America. So I, I think that definitely helps things a little bit. Um, it, it, it but does. It, it's, it's just a, a great atmosphere and a great uh, conference. And um, yeah, I can't speak highly enough about it. Like I, I, I want to talk a little bit about it later. Let's let's put that on the, on the back burner a little bit because I want to I want to dive a little bit more into to, to you. Um, we've sort of talked about what you did after you retired, but how did you get started as a physical educator? Like what brought you into the profession? I think my, uh, my route to becoming a physical education teacher is very similar to yours and a lot of PE friends. It was through sport. Uh, my sport was gymnastics. It was something I excelled in, in, uh, high school and college. Uh, was able over time to go to the NCAA National Men's Championships on the rings. And um, I just loved gymnastics. I loved learning about it. I loved coaching it. And so that's what I wanted to become, a gymnastics coach. Um, but uh, I found out later that really being a teacher first over a coach seemed to be a better fit for me. Uh, I was able to influence the lives of more boys and girls uh, than, I, than if I were coaching. Um, I enjoyed working with elite athletes, but sometimes you just need to make a, a choice. And my choice was I prefer to be a physical education teacher to all the students. In other words, really to be that 
coach for all the students that I saw. Sure. sure. So where did you like? Where did you go to school and like? How did you get qualified sure. to do that? Oh yeah, um, I grew up in Los Angeles, California. Um, so I went to Los Angeles City College, which was about a fifteen-minute walk from from my house. And then I also went to Cal State LA undergraduate, and then got my graduate degree at the University of North Carolina, uh, Chapel Hill. And then you stayed in North Carolina, you never left? Yeah, stayed in North Carolina, never left. Met a beautiful woman, <laughs> we have five kids. That was gonna be my next question, what kept you there, but uh, you, you went ahead and answered it. It was, it was love. Yeah, it, love. Always, it always is. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, and, uh, so then I guess like you're qualified and, and I'm reading now like, like on your uh, your great activities page, Adi Kamiya has been called the nation's leading expert in K to twelve physical education. So, how do you get from being, you know, someone that's just fresh out of school, physical educator, to being called the nation's leading expert in K to twelve physical education? How does well, how does I that just, take place? I, I I think that just happens over time, Nathan. Um, I was able to build a reputation through our publishing company. And I, I love editing. I like writing. I like helping other individuals to write and submit articles to our great activities newspaper. We've been in business now for 36 years. Uh, there aren't many businesses around that can say that they they've helped for the past 36 years. And so we, we, uh, we're, we're still a very small publishing company. Um, and then I started doing workshops. People said, Hey, can you do a, a workshop, a half day workshop, a full day workshop? And before long, we were scheduling workshops all up and down the East coast, out West, all up and down California. And we did our workshops on the individual state standards. So if we were in Connecticut, we wanted to focus in on the, the written taught and tested standards in Connecticut. Um, I've been very fortunate to have been invited to, I want to say 45 or 46 different states, wow. um, either as a, a main presenter, a keynote, or just a, a workshop pre presenter. It's, it's just been fun. I, I, I'm so blessed to be able to work with people like you, right, who are passionate about teaching and are passionate about students, uh, the children and youth we serve. And that's that's all I want to do. I want a meaningful life. Yeah. I've been able to get one so far. Okay. Yeah, and I think like you, you talk about passion and, and I think that's the perfect word to, to describe you. And I think you're, you're just one of the most passionate people I that I know in, in terms of not only physical education, but just life in general. You just always seem to have a smile on your face and whatever you put your mind to, you're very passionate about you, you talked about the publishing company where where did that come like how did that start and, and what was, what was so the story that, that sure nathan that started from frustration um i had written an article and i wanted it published in joford which is our national magazine for health and pe teachers and it was rejected and so i made it better tweaked it made it better submitted it again and it was rejected. And they said, well, you have to have all these citations. You have to have all these references. And I'm saying, hey, I'm, a, I'm an elementary PE teacher. I, I just know what works. And this works for me. It was a, a different field day format. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to start my own publication. And it's going to be filled with great activities from people submitting activities from all across the United States. And so that's what happened. We called it the Great Activities Newspaper. Uh, at the end of the first year, we had 500 subscribers. End of the second year, we had 1,000 subscribers. Um, at the end of about seven years, we had 5,000 subscribers. Wow. And it was so cool because it was kind of like a workshop in a booklet. So every other month, you'd open up your mailbox and you would pull out a 48-page issue of great activities filled with great activities, <laughs> ideas, games, strategies for elementary, middle school, physical education teachers. And it was just so much fun editing it and putting it together. 
and it still is. I mean, that's what we're doing this week. My son and I, Jeremy, we're putting it together this week. This will be our May, June issue for the school year. And so how many, how many issues are we talking now over 30, Oh, I don't, years? I, it's, it, it's, it, it's 36 years times five. You have a calculator? Yeah, let's have a look here. 36 times five, 180? 180. There you go. 180. Do you know what I, and I remember talking to you about this. I found one of these, um, in my past school in Singapore, I was going through a filing cabinet and they pulled out this, uh, this magazine, I was like, what's this? <laughs> this old piece of paper that's probably been right. sitting in this filing cabinet for, for years and years and years. Um, and there it is, great activities. And I start looking at it and like, this is amazing stuff. Like this is, you know, you can see, it was probably a, an article, uh, an edition from, you know, 10, 15 years ago, still right. to this day has value within, within uh, physical education settings. So um, I think, you know, keep it up for as long as you can. And I guess that's my next question is, you know, you, you've talked about being an old man. How, how much longer are you going to be doing this for? That's a good question. And I think about it daily because, <laughs> you know, Nathan, sometimes you have good days and sometimes you have not so good days. Um, but I've learned over in my life not to get my highs too high and my lows too low. Um, try to be a moderate Try to think moderately. Um, I'm going to work until at least age 75. Okay. So I'm 67. So we got a few years of few years of Audi left. Four years. Um, and, and we'll see. We'll see how long the publishing gig goes. Publishing has been hard, uh, mainly because of the internet, and there are so many free opportunities and so many people like yourself you know you're you're blogging you have a website and you're freely sharing content which is wonderful rich and great and and so that's where the the young millennials are going it's it's hard to sell a printed book now we can and we have but uh there's just so much more competition which rightfully so because the price point is much cheaper it's free and the quality is great. So I, I can't say enough about bloggers, physical education bloggers and website developers like yourself. But that was going to be my next question is, you know, how does someone um, who is in a publishing company and, you know, I guess you, you've talked about millennials and coming from a different age, like you, you didn't grow up with the internet, you didn't grow up with, with social media, yet here you are as a really active voice on social media um, and, and in the online presence. So how did, like, how did you find that space and, 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 you know, like what does that space mean to you as someone that, that you know, doesn't, people talk about digital natives and kids that have grown up with this technology, like, can you take me through that sort of? Sure. So um, I always plan ahead. It's just something I do. And so if I'm thinking about uh, a new book, a new conference, a new something, I plan three or four years before that time. And I knew the future was going to be on the Internet, on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, I still am very reluctant to do Voxer. <clears throat> I'm not a Voxerite. I just that would just kill my phone and just totally destroy my day. But I'm very active on Twitter and Facebook. And um, in order to gather that audience, you have to plan ahead two or three, four years. Um, it's amazing. I mean, think about it. You could take that thought that's in your head, that idea, that expression, you could type it and you could publish it, boom, that very same day. And if you don't like it because you made a mistake, you just edit it or delete it. I mean, it's, I just think um, for a person who loves to write, which I do, it's, it's instant gratification. And there's really nothing better, really, other than video, maybe. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I, I think it's amazing. Um, I think just to hear you speak, I, I feel like, you know, physical education is your thing, but I, I think if I'm listening to you, you know, writing maybe is, is a love of yours that, that maybe even supersedes that. And I'm sure if you were writing about trucks or, uh, <laughs> I don't know, whatever, whatever your passion was, like that you would put this much 
um, effort and energy into to whatever you did. So I think we're all very thankful that physical education is the thing that, that, that drives you because, you know, I think through your conference, through the, um, through the work that you've done with, with Shape America and, and the, you know, the, all the different organizations across the US and then the great activities, like you said, you've just helped so many physical educators all around the world and you continue to do that. And I, I sort of, in some ways, like my, my image of you is this like godfather almost who <laughs> is just, you know, there to, to help and support everybody. Um, and you're always willing to, to help and, and ask questions about, you know, how can I help you to be better at what you do? And, and I just think it's an amazing thing. And not only as a physical educator, but just as a person in general to have that uh, disposition, I think is a, is something that for me, I would, I would love to, to be able to have people say that about me as a, when I'm 67 years old. So a, a lot of credit to, to you, I think. They, and big they're, they're, they're saying it about you right now. Oh, Adi, you, you're being they're, too they're kind. They're saying it about you right now. If, if I had half the talent and the passion that you had now, when I was your age, I'd be burnt out. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't know what you could accomplish. Um, and it, it's, it's pretty amazing what, what you and Joey and other folks out there in the Twitter sphere have been able to accomplish. It's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm just so grateful to be alive during this time, this period of the world. I mean, I could have been born 50 years earlier and never, never yeah. ne learned anything about Twitter and Facebook. It's, this is a very, very special and important time for physical education. Yeah, and I think that, advantage. yeah, it is a really, really important and special time. And I think like that sort of leads into one of the questions that I was gonna ask is like, there seems to be, you know, there's so much information out there right now. We live in this information age and the internet and Twitter and Voxer. And if I'm a physical educator and, you know, like I'm maybe I'm in a school by myself, I'm struggling a little bit, I don't really know where to turn. It can be quite overwhelming the amount of information that's out there. So in your perspective, like what's, what's really worth doing? What should we really be focusing on? Um, as a professional, what should I be focusing on as a physical educator if I'm in a situation where maybe I don't know where to turn next? Right. I think, I think we have to develop professional filters, and there should be several questions that you ask yourself. If you happen to see a presenter or read a great activity in a book or a magazine, there should be a series of filters you need to filter everything through. Uh, number one, are skills being built? In other words, is this game or this activity or this lesson, is it helping to develop children's skills? Are they becoming more skillful? Um, are they working on character skills? Are they working on social skills along with the physical? So there needs to be that filter. In other words, why am I playing this game or this activity? Um, we can't just play games for game's sake without having some outcomes. And I, and I know that you understand that, and most physical education teachers understand that. See, the thing um, is, Adi, the thing is, Adi, like, I think there's a lot of people that don't understand that. And that's why I want to have this conversation with you, because I think that within this online community, it's great that there's so many people that are on the same page. But for every one of us that are in this community, there's probably 10 of us who are not in this community and, and aren't thinking along those lines. You're right. And that is unfortunate. And, and so... I've always said, as a, a guesstimate for me, I say I've always said 20 to 25 percent of us are physical educators. I don't know what the other 75 to 80 percent of us are. I think they might be game producers. They might be um, activity producers. But I really wonder if they're physically educating the children and youth that they serve. Um, so we need to get away from a game mentality just to play a game. Uh, we really need to take a look at what skills are important 
and what's being taught and what's being learned. Just because you teach something doesn't mean that's being learned. Yeah, yeah, really. Next time on the Phys Ed Cast, we're going to catch up with Dr. Stephen Harvey from Ohio University, where he is an associate professor in coaching education. If you're saying you're doing a game-centered or game-based approach and clearly you're spending the majority of your lessons where, you know, or nearly all the lesson where children are dribbling a field hockey ball around cones, that's not a game-based approach. I can't wait to share that episode with Dr. Stephen Harvey, but for now, back to Artie. So you mentioned, uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the National PE Institute, now called the National PE and School Sports Institute. Um, how many years now has that been been running? Um, this is year, year number seven, coming up year number seven. Okay, um, so seven years. I think you've had the who's who of, of the phys ed world present there. Um, but even more than that, like we sort of mentioned earlier and you've talked about just that idea of, networking and, and meeting other physical educators um it's in an absolutely beautiful part of the world um asheville uh, north carolina um why why did you choose there what was what made you choose that that location um first of all i had a friend who actually worked at the university dr david gardner was the executive director of a uh, health education group there at the university and so I asked Dave what would be the chance of actually hosting a national conference. And he said, well, let me talk to the athletics director because the athletics folks, they, they essentially run the facility. It's their facility. And um, he said, yeah, it's a go. You tell us when to go and we could go ahead and do it. Uh, Asheville is just so beautiful. I mean, like you mentioned that and, and the, this campus is up, it's up on a hill and it's, I don't know. It's just very, uh, very serene, laid back, uh, a lot of arts, a lot of music, a lot of beer, like you would say. <laughs> so it's, it's just known to be a very good venue all across the United States. So. Um, we're just fortunate to pick Asheville. It was a toss up between Asheville and the beach, to be honest with you. Um, I was going to contact UNC Wilmington, which is, you know, down at the coast, Wrightsville Beach. Um, but it just turns out that Asheville was a good fit for us. For sure. For sure. And you yeah. like the, the time of year that you hold it as well as it's sort of the summertime, I guess. Um, right. So, yeah. like. Again, why did you choose that time? Was there was there a reason behind that time, or? Well, it 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 fit the uh, the schedule at UNC Asheville. Um, it, it's a it's a college setting. Uh, we couldn't do it during the school year. Um, we had to do it in between summer school camps and athletic programs, and so that the date the the dates this year are July twenty third, twenty fourth, and twenty fifth. Um, so that time frame is a good fit for them. It's a good fit for us. Um, I've always said that the Institute's a, nat uh, a natural filter. You won't go there unless you're dedicated. Uh, you won't go there unless you value professionalism over your summer vacation. And so the individuals that we do get, they're the most highly motivated, most respectful, and um it just kind of works out that way. Yeah. And so when you're around a lot of motivated and highly respectful people, it just brings out the best in you as a person. For sure. And I think that's something that I've always like reflected on. Like I know when I, when I was there and I, and I went away and you know, that was the summer and I just felt so invigorated and so motivated then to go back at the start of the next school year and, and get things in, get into things and, and to try all these new things that I'd learned. And um, I think often, you know, these conferences that happen throughout the school year, there's so many other things happening within a, within a teacher's life at that point, whether they've got reports to do or whether they've got coaching duties or whether they've, you know, so many different things that, you know, you go to this conference, but then you're back into the, the daily grind again. Right. So I think, you know, having that in the summer, you're getting those people that are really dedicated to it, like you said, but it also gives you the opportunity to maybe have a bit of distance from your actual day-to-day -day reality and to be able to reflect upon, well, here's 
some of the challenges that I'm facing and, and then you get these new ideas, but it also then gives you time to be able to reflect on those ideas before you're putting them into practice. You're not just, you know, bringing yeah. a, I think we, you see it all the time. You go to a workshop on a weekend or, or a, a conference and you come back to school on the Monday and you're super excited and you've got all these great ideas and by Friday you're beaten back down into <laughs> Yeah. depression and boredom again because of, of all the other things so i think like there's like you said it, it is in the summer you know so that that may make some people not feel like that they can make it because you know their their summers are reserved for other things but i would definitely couldn't recommend enough if you want to to, to really improve your practice then the pe institute is is somewhere that you need to go at least once in your life sort of like a like mecca i guess for for pe teachers yeah. <laughs> right um, we had, there's a group of uh, physical education teachers in Phoenix, Arizona. They call us the the PE ninjas. I don't know why. I mean, just they just I guess out of respect, right? Yeah. Um, but we have found that summer's the best time to do it. Really, if you think about it, um, educationally, summer is a time to reflect. And it's a time to recharge your batteries, and it gives you time to plan your school year. You can't do that during the school year. It's like trying to operate on someone and learn how to operate on someone at the same time. Can't be done. So summer really is the best time for for making a, a change in the way that you think about teaching. For sure. So for those people that uh, that want to head on down and find out more about it, where can they? How can they find out more about the PE Institute? Well, all you need to do is just Google uh, National PE Institute. And we've been around long enough. It'll it'll pop right up. Yeah. Uh, National PE and School Sport Institute. For sure. And like I said, if if you're thinking about heading off to a conference, if you want to get some, if you need to get some funding from your school, and and you're looking for somewhere to go, then definitely think about uh, the PE and School Sport Institute. It's definitely, uh, I would say, top of my list for places that I want to head back to again at some point, uh, very very soon. Um, I guess we're, we're sort of coming to the end of, of our time. I wanted to keep this short, but I, I do know that I want to get you back on again for another episode. I think, Artie, because I think there's so many more things that we could talk about. Um, but before we go, I think there are there's three questions that I like to ask my guests and, and sort of more rapid fire um, answers. So, you know, 25 words or less. Um, first thing that comes into your mind um, so the first one is, what's the most interesting thing about you outside of physical education? What, what's something that people don't know about Artie Kamiya? I love to garden. Uh, if you if you walk if you were to walk by our front house, our front house, our front door, <laughs> you'll see me out there gardening. I love planting flowers. I love mowing the grass. Uh, my father was a gardener, and so I, I guess I got that from from him. Okay. Second question. Um, I know you're a very reflective person. I think like we just talked a little bit about reflection. I think part of being reflective is being able to identify what you're not very good at. So what are you, what are you not good at? I am not very good at being a charismatic leader. I'm not a charismatic leader. Um, that I don't have that surprises me. Well, I could do it in spurts. Like now, when I was teaching, I could do it in spurts. But my my natural uh, style is um, uh, <laughs> I'm an introvert, and people that have been around me realize I'm an introvert. I'm 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 not an extrovert. So um, it takes a lot of energy for me to extrovert and, and teach well. Okay. Yeah, interesting. I wasn't I wasn't expecting that at all because I think anyone that's met you would say that you're very outgoing and friendly and um I wouldn't say extroverted, but yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have guessed that. So I, I guess again, thank you for your for your effort, the all the effort you go to to, to be as energetic and, and passionate as you are for um for someone that, that identifies as being being an introvert. So yeah, interesting. I learned something new about you today. Good. All right. The last question. We sort of touched a little bit on this before, but um, like if you could only say one thing, what, what's the most important thing that we need to be doing in physical education moving forward? I, need, we, I think we need to ask ourselves why we're doing it. Why are we doing physical education? 
and what are the long-term benefits of physical education for the children we serve? And if you can't come up with a good answer, then maybe you need to find something different to do with your life. Mm-hmm. I think there's a there's something a quote that I've heard before, and I'm probably going to butcher it a little bit, but it, there's something along the lines of, you know, education shouldn't be something that we do to people. It's not something that we should be like making them do. It should be something that they're experiencing and that we're facilitating. And I, and I think you've sort of touched on that a little bit now. Um, yeah. So again, thank you so much for for spending some time with me today. I'm, I'm definitely going to be contacting you again to to do another one of these at some point in the in the near future because I think there's a lot more stuff that we can we can chat about. But I do want to keep it short um, and at around 30 minutes today. So thank you so much. Um, you mentioned that people can find information about the P Institute at the website there. How can people get in contact with you if they want to ask you some questions? Sure. Um, yeah, there, there. I think, I think there's only one Artie Kamiya. I think there's definitely, there's definitely only one Artie Kamiya. I, I think. Um, so you could Google me as well, um, Nathan. One thing that maybe your listeners wouldn't know is I was recently hired to be the executive director of the North Carolina Alliance for Athletics, Health, Physical Education, Recreation and Dance, and Sport Management. So I'm I'm the state executive director for our state professional organization. So NC Aford, SM, if you Google that or can remember that. That's a lot of letters. <laughs> we're really... Uh, Maybe we might change our name to North Carolina Shape sometime in the future. Uh, but you should be able to get in contact with me that way, Nathan. Okay. Well, great. Thanks so much again, Artie. Um, always an absolute pleasure to speak with you. So uh, I look forward to connecting with you again uh, very, very soon. Okay. Thank you. All right. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Artie Kamia, a phys ed legend for sure. Thanks for listening to the first episode of the Phys Ed Cast. If you enjoyed it, it would really help us if you would head on over to iTunes and uh, rate and review the show. It really helps uh, the Phys Ed Cast get out there to more and more listeners. Um, and by doing that, it helps me to be able to get better guests, uh, people on the podcast who are going to be able to share some really incredible insight into physical education, coaching, uh, education, and life just in general. It's the intention of this show that it is predominantly physical education based. However, I'm be looking to try and get some some pretty high profile names and guests on the show, maybe some Olympic athletes, uh, some other, I guess, people that are really experts and cutting edge in their fields um, to share their knowledge um, around the lens of physical education, health, Uh, physical literacy and so on i look forward to the next episode of the phys ed cast where we chat with dr stephen harvey speak to you then